this is a step-by-step -step guide on how to install the Zulip chat server on Linux Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. So Zulip is a modern collaboration platform that makes it easy for teams to communicate and collaborate in real time. It combines the best features of instant messaging, email and chatbot technology to provide an intuitive interface for teams to work together. So let's take an overview of the steps covered in this tutorial. First, I'll show you how to create the Linux Ubuntu instance on the Amazon Lightsell servers. Second, I'll show you how to connect to the instance via SSH and update the system repository. Third, I'll then show you how to download and install the Zulip chat server. And finally, I'll then show you how to complete the post-installation setup process. So let's get started. I've signed into my Amazon Web Services account. I'm going to search for and open the light cell service. So if you're doing the same thing, click on the returned light cell search result. On the dashboard, click on the create instance button and this should then open up the instance creation wizard. Select Linux slash Unix, click on OS only and then select the Ubuntu 20.04 blueprint. Choose the $10 plan and on the identify your instance field, set the name to Zulip server. Click on the Create Instance button to complete the instance creation process. So you should now see a new Zulip server instance being shown on the Instances tab. So click on the instance name and then click on the Networking tab. So we're going to assign a static IP address to the instance. So click Attach Static IP and then give the uh, IP address a name. So in my case, I'm going to call it Zulip Static IP. Click on the Create uh, and Attach uh, button to uh, provision a static IP address to the instance. So once that's been done, click on Continue and then scroll down to the IPv6 networking section. So I'm just going to disable IPv6 networking and I'm going to open up uh, HTTPS port 443. So this should then allow us to uh, connect to the Zulip web interface on, an, on a secure HTTPS connection actually. Click on the Connect tab and then click on the Download Default Key button. So this is the key pair file that we'll actually use to connect to the instance. So I'm just going to rename the key to Zulip Server Key. Okay, so once that's been done, proceed to open up your SSH client and change your working directory to the downloads directory. And then run the command to set the key pair file to read only. Then execute the command SSHI Specify the file name for the key pair file and then type in Ubuntu at the IP address for the instance. So I'm just going to copy the static IP that we've assigned to the instance and just paste that into the command line interface. Type in yes to confirm and should now be connected to the instance on an SSH um, uh, connection actually. So I'm just going to execute the command sudo su to elevate my access to the root user. Then type in the command hostname ctl, set hostname, and that's going to be Zulip server. So I'm just going to set that to Zulip server and press enter. So I'm just going to edit the host configuration file, and I'm going to type in 127.0.1.1, and that's going to be Zulip server.mydomainname.com. And then you can then say Zulip server at the end there. Press Ctrl plus O, press Enter to confirm, and then press Ctrl plus X to exit the file. So you now need to edit the um, etc cloud and then cloud.cfg config file. In this file, we're going to set the preserve hostname parameter to true. So I'm just going to change that from false and I'm going to type in true. So this should then make sure that the custom hosting that we've set will actually persist across the reboots. So run the command apt update to update the system repository. And once the update process is complete, we're then going to try to add the universe repository to the Ubuntu server. So copy and paste that command and as you can see in my case that's already been set up but in your case if this hasn't been done then i recommend that you run that command restart the instance so that all of the changes we've made will actually take effect so next i'm going to open up the root 53 service and then click on hosted zones click on any one hosted zone for your registered domain names and then click on the create record button so we're just going to set the record name to zulip server and then you then simply need to paste in the public IP address for the uh, Ubuntu instance on the value field. 
click on the create records button to create the record. So I'm just going to reconnect to the Linux Ubuntu instance and I'll just change to the root user. And then finally, I'll then execute the command to download the Zulip installation archive file. So once that's been done, if you run the ls command, you actually see that we've got that Zulip server latest dot tar.gz file. So next, I'm going to type in a command to extract this file. So type in tar and then type in zxvf and then specify the file name for the archive file. And as you can see, the extraction process is now in progress. So once the file has been extracted, if you run the ls command, you'll actually see that we've got a new Zulip server 6.1 directory. If you move into that directory and run the ls command again, you actually see the Zulip installation uh, files. So we're actually going to use these files to actually set up the Zulip server. So I'm just going to move out of this uh, directory and then I am going to issue a command to start the installation. So type in dot and forward slash and then specify the path to the installation script and then also specify an email address and domain name for SSL setup. So if you press enter, you should now see the Zulip server installation now in progress. This can take a bit of some time and you need to be a bit patient for the process to complete. During installation, you'll actually be asked what to do with the ssh underscore config file. So I'm just going to choose to keep the local version that is currently installed and then we're just going to proceed with the installation process. So there's another prompt that will actually be displayed that I'll actually explain to you in a moment. So um, it's actually going to ask uh, to agree to the terms of service when it's actually uh, setting up the SSL certificate. So you just need to type in NA and press end. So um, you just need to leave the installation uh, script doing what it needs to do to set up the application. I also recommend that you actually run this installation uh, script from within a screen session. That would ensure that the installation doesn't fail if you happen to lose your SSH connection. So you simply have to reconnect to your server and then reopen the screen session with the Zulip uh, setup. So you're going to see a URL being shown on the command line uh, prompt. So simply copy this URL and then open up any web browser that you'd like. So I'm going to use uh, Firefox to complete this part. So paste in that URL and you should actually see a page asking you to create a new Zulip organization. So I'm just going to specify my email address and then click on the create organization button. So I'm going to type in an organization name and then select the organization type. So in my case, I'm just going to set it to an education nonprofit type of organization. So I'm just going to choose the to use the zulip.mydomainname.com uh, URL and then type in a name. So I'm just going to type in my name here as well as a password. So you need to make sure you type in a secure password uh, on this field and then click on the sign up button. So we should actually now see the Zulip dashboard from here. So it does take a moment when you're setting it up for the first time or it depends on the specs for your server actually. So um, we've successfully set up the Zulip uh, chat server and from here you can actually now uh, start customizing the system and adding your uh, team members. So that's been it guys. Uh, that's a quick look at uh, how you can set up the Zulip chat server on a Linux Ubuntu 20.04 LTS server. Please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And please also share this video with your peers, colleagues, and friends. I hope this tutorial has been informative. And I'd like to thank you for viewing.